What happens when the thing you love to do the most becomes the thing that you don't love doing? Over the last 10 years on YouTube, I have been sharing my art journey with you, and this is a huge part of it, uh, and not a fun part, but something that I want to share with you because maybe there's some of you who are going through the same thing or have gone through it or in the future will go through it. First, what went on with me and how I'm overcoming that. And then I want to give you guys a chance in the comments to share your stories, your suggestions on how you moved past it so that this can kind of be a resource for people because this is a real thing that I think a lot of artists go through. And it's, it's maybe one of the scariest parts of my art journey. So let's talk about it. I have been creating art since I was very young, loved art. Art has always been my happy thing to do. If, if life is stressful, I'll do art. If I am exhausted and tired, I relax with art. Even if I am at like Disneyland, my favorite place in the world, while I'm enjoying it, I'm still thinking, I can't wait to get home because then I can do art. Everything inspired me to create art. I, there were times I just couldn't decide which art I wanted to do because I wanted to do all the arts until about a year ago. And that's when I began to notice a change in my, my thinking about art. When I would come into my art studio to start working, instead of being excited about what I could possibly create, I found myself thinking, you know, you're just wasting your time. You're going to spend five, six hours for nothing because whatever you create, it's not going to be good and you're not going to like it and it's either going to go into the trash can or, you know, the art graveyard. And it was usually true. If I look back on all the art I created in 2022, even in 2021, nothing stands out in my mind. I don't think, yes, I created this piece during that time. Mm -mm. There's nothing. I didn't enjoy doing art. Now, I've had artist block before. Lots, almost every artist has experienced artist block, and this wasn't it. Artist block is wanting to create something, but not knowing what to create, or creating something and it not turning out, but you still want to create it. And that can be a really frustrating thing, and there's, I, I've gone through that. That's a totally different topic, but this wasn't it. Though I was trying to create, nothing was turning out, my desire to want to create was fizzling. It was more like an art schlump. But I think it was bigger than that. Like an art schlump to me makes me think that it's just like, you know, you need a little break and then you'll come back to it. So that's what I decided to do. I decided to give myself some time off. So in August, I posted my last video. I made a little announcement saying I was taking a little break. I thought two, three weeks, maybe a month, I won't do any art. Then I'll come back ready to go. It'll be awesome. And when I made that decision, something changed. I was so excited not to art. The idea that I didn't have to come up with a with an idea piece or draw a thumbnail or think of a video to create or, or a social media post or scheduling out this, the business aspect of, of drawing and creating and the creative aspects, they were just put on the back shelf and I didn't have to even think about them. I was so excited. It, it was something I'd never felt before. I could do things that I hadn't been able to do before. I threw myself into baking and cooking. I learned how to crochet, but I didn't want to create art. I didn't want to draw. I had no desire. I thought by the end of the month that I would be just ready to jump back in and want to create, that I would have to force myself to not do art until the end of the month, but that wasn't the case. September came and I still was not looking forward to arting. Um, I would come into my studio and I would try to art and mostly I would just watch YouTube videos and then I would leave and I would think, okay, well, give yourself another month. So I did. In October, I thought I'll come back fresh. It'll be my birthday and that'll be just kind of a, a good time to restart everything. And while in October, I was interested in creating art, I wasn't interested in filming it. So the thing that you have to understand about people that film art and other art YouTubers will totally understand what I'm talking about is when we're filming art, we have to think about what you guys can see. We have to get the camera in a position where you can see what's going on. And generally the best place for the camera to be is right in front of our face. So as we're creating art, 
there is this camera that's like right there and we have to kind of lean around it or you have to position it kind of in a really weird position. And then there's the lighting aspect. You have to make sure that the light is not creating cast shadows. So you have all these different lights that are blaring and they can oftentimes get, be really hard for the artist to see because they're kind of shining in your eyes. It's not a great natural feeling to create art while recording art, but it's something that artists on YouTube, we just do because that's what we do. So to create art without having to have my filming set up was really nice. Also, I could take time to really look at my piece and not have to think about, okay, don't take too many pauses because then you have to go and edit that pause out because you're just sitting there staring at it for five minutes and that's dead time. Or don't make a mistake because then you'll erase it and people will be mad because you drew this whole thing and then they had to erase it all and then you have to restart it and they'll be like, why? You know, it's, you didn't, I didn't have to think about that. So I enjoyed creating art. Didn't create anything spectacular, but again, I was starting to enjoy the process. So this was when I had to start thinking, is this the end of the art channel? Is Art a la carte done? I mean, it's had a good run. We've been here 10 years. And in all transparency, the art channels, except for a small handful of them, the wave of YouTube is done for us. We've we've had our heyday. And, and I think what it is, is back 10 years ago, when I started a YouTube channel, and you wanted to look up a video on how to draw horses, there was maybe three or four really good videos out there. And so it was easy to make a video and for your video to be noticed. And people go, oh, there's a how to draw horse video. I have five to choose from. Let's choose this one. And so it was, it, it was easier. Now you look up how to draw horses and there's hundreds of videos on how to draw horses. So many to choose from, which is awesome. But it's also challenging for a YouTube content creator to get that notice. There Now, there are some channels that have done amazing. They have found their niche. They have, they keep their content fresh and challenging um, and are doing well. But a lot of art channels I notice aren't doing as well as they had done. So from a business aspect, was that something I wanted to continue doing? And I had to remember the reason I started this channel. This channel, I never thought as a business. I had started posting videos because I had a few art students that couldn't make an art class. And so I would make a tutorial for them and let them see it. And they would watch it and my mom. And that was it. But then slowly more people began to watch it. And pretty soon I had students all over the world that I was talking with. And then one day I thought, hey, maybe I could actually make this a job. And you know, continue doing what I love to do, but actually get paid. And that was an awesome perk. This, this is not the reason why I started this channel. I made these videos not to get a 100,000 views on my video. I made these videos for the handful of artists that needed help, that needed an art teacher that I never had. I remember wanting to do art and not having a teacher show me how to do things or to ask them questions or to show them my work and get encouraged. And I wanted to be that. I want to be that for people. That's why I create these videos. And once I put that into perspective, once I realized I'm not doing this to make a living, I'm doing this because I love art and I want other people to love art as well. Then things began to change back in my mind. I think I let the business aspect of it, while it's important if you're going to be a professional artist to be business minded, I let that overshadow my passion for art. I turned this channel into what the trendy thing was, what everybody else was doing, instead of what I originally wanted this channel to be, which was primarily tutorials, teaching art. I thought every single thing I create as an artist, I have to video it, I have to record it, I have to share it because it's all content. Everything is content. And nothing was just personally me. I will still post videos. Will I post three videos a week? Probably not. Will I post even a video, one video a week? Probably not. My goal is every other week to every once a month. But it's a baby step. Moving towards that, making, making video content. Will I record every single thing that I make? Definitely not. Will I share everything that I make? Of course. 
um, I will either do videos, you know, what I created this month and show you guys that. I might show, share a little bit of the creative process, but I'm not going to pressure myself to have to record every single step process of creating a piece. So yeah, taking it back to where I was last really happy with art and remembering why I started what I started has been the key to me. This art schlump has turned into more of an art avalanche, a mudslide than a schlump. <laughs> Schlump I just makes me feel like like a gopher hill, but this has been like, you know, Mount Vesuvius. And so the keys for me to get over this was go ahead and take a break. If creating art doesn't bring you joy in the process of creating it, then take a break and find something else, whether it's baking or learning music or exercise or crocheting. <laughs> There's a lot of great videos out there, by the way. Thank you, crochet YouTubers who have made tutorials because you have been such a good inspiration for me. Um, but give yourself that break. I used to say, if, if this is your job, push through it. And yeah, to some aspect, I had to. But I had to, I had to come to a part where I knew I had to take a, a bigger break. And this has been probably what saved it. I think if I would have kept pushing, I think I would have gone into full burnout. And maybe I did. Maybe I did go into burnout. I think a lot more artists go through this than we hear about because I think a lot of, especially art YouTubers, when they burn out, they just stop. And we just, and I've seen it tons of times, lots of channels that I've watched just stop posting. And you go, what, I wonder what happened to them? And they don't explain what happened. And I wanted to make sure that I at least explained um, I have every intention to stick around. I want to. I enjoy doing this. And I think I've, I've discovered, you know, some good steps towards coming back. Uh, I would love to hear some more success stories of artists that have gone through this, who have pushed through, who have taken whatever steps they need to and, and found themselves loving art again. I feel like I'm almost there again. Like, I've never broken a bone, but I, feel that it would be kind of like breaking your bone and it's been in a cast and now the cast is off and you're just not sure if you trust it enough to put your, f you know, use it fully like you used to and you're scared that it's going to snap or hurt. And so you're tentatively just like testing it. I think I'm at that stage. I'm testing out my art castless hand and going, do I really like this? Because I feel like I like this, but I didn't like it before. <laughs> This has been a very rambly video, but something that I feel like I needed to share and actually the process of that, of voicing this and putting it into words and talking about it has been really helpful. And I actually am kind of excited. I want to finish this video, edit it, post it so I can start working on a tutorial video. And I think ah, it's like one o'clock in the afternoon. And I don't have to do anything until six. So I have like five hours. Let's create. So that's that's positive, you guys. That is a huge difference from this time last year when I was going, I don't want to do this. So everyone watching this video has been supporting my channel, been with me for 10 years, or maybe this is your first day. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me, being part of my journey. Uh, I can't wait to share more journeys in the future with you and tutorials and art videos and stuff. So keep creating, give yourself breaks, but don't give up. Don't give up on things that bring you joy. God bless you guys. Keep being creative and we'll see you in the next video.